Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. A not so golden ticket. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. On July 9th, 2021, we talked about the Van Gogh Immersive Experience. You can check it out in our liner notes called the Van Gogh Immersive Experience Scam. And today we're revisiting the idea of immersive experiences, what they are, if they've hit a critical point, and most importantly, what they really promise to their visitors. The answer to these questions isn't that simple, but the last one, what they promise, can be a tall order, even in the best of circumstances, given as all of these experiences usually use well-known and beloved intellectual property. I'm confident in saying that the Willy Wonka experience is the worst of immersive circumstances, promising chocolate rivers and giant lollipops in a world of whimsy and candy-coated fun for Glasgow kids who love the films. But the actuality of the event wasn't that. Instead, it became a nightmarish and depressing foray into the unknown, featuring sad Oompa Loompas, a couple jelly beans, AI posters, and literally a character called the Unknown. This is one of our rare, timely episodes, and we've been boots to the ground this week getting all the info on this wild flop just for you. Today on Ghost Town, the Willy Wonka Experience. On February 24th, police were called to an immersive event called Willie's Chocolate Experience in Glasgow, put on by a company called the House of Illuminati. Frustrated parents decided that enough was enough and that they were going to involve law enforcement to demand event refunds from the company. Of course, calling the police might seem a little reactionary until you understand how this event was advertised and what the families experienced. The $45 event was marketed as having, quote, optical marvels, extraordinary props, chocolate fountains, performances by Oompa Loompas, and interactive experiences. These exciting promises were complemented by vivid, AI-generated images of opulent candy pathways, multicolored stages, and jelly bean paved roads, to name a few, all illuminating the fun and sweet adventures to come. But when visitors arrived at the event, they realized that this was not the experience they were promised. Not even close. One parent complained that upon arrival, she found, quote, a disorganized mini maze of randomly placed oversized props, a lackluster candy station that dispersed one jelly bean per child, and a terrifying chrome-masked character that scared many of the kids to tears. But let's just go through exactly what people saw from the photos and videos I've seen on the internet. Families arrived at a sparse warehouse with some small printed AI backgrounds haphazardly hung up, waiting on benches for more than an hour for a tour through a 
smaller purple factory sign and gold-ish gates. Inside was, I don't even know how to describe it, just absolute depression. Families would walk into this warehouse with rainbow awnings, flimsy props everywhere. I, I, can't, I can't even describe like the cheapness. Think like a bouncy castle type of aesthetic, but kind of dispersed through this giant area. I mean, if it were all like in one cluster, it might look a little bit less depressing, but it's like one thing to the next and wandering around with these AI kind of poster prints that were probably around five to six feet tall and maybe 78 feet wide. That's it, inside a giant warehouse. The biggest probably set piece, I guess, were these plastic candy canes around green hedges, and they were all around this drawbridge, under which a shallow plastic chocolate river existed. At some point, a woman in what looks like a Halloween Town sexy Oompa Loompa costume gave children a jelly bean or two and a quarter cup of lemonade, while other, quote, Oompa Loompas hung up by a small science kit pretending to be making candy in a lab. And there's this very famous picture of this. It's really depressing. The actor doesn't look like they're having fun. They have this tiny little set dressing. It's just, it's so depressing. By the end of the experience, a comedian playing Willy Wonka comes up to kids and takes photos with them. This character introduces what is probably the most confounding part of the whole experience. Another made-up character that apparently is joining the Willy Wonka canon called The Unknown. One video that was going viral on TikTok shows this character, The Unknown, emerging from behind a mirror with a silver mask and a very bad black wig. What is that? It's The Unknown, says the actor playing Willy Wonka. The Unknown, in this video, is played by a 16-year-old named Felicia, and she again emerges from behind a full-length freestanding mirror in a silver mask and a black curly wig. She kind of snakes around the kids and Willy Wonka and then runs away into the factory. The Independent interviewed Paul Connell, the unfortunate comedian who played Willy Wonka, who explained this new character. And it's pretty amazing. He says, quote, The bit that got me was where I had to say, There is a man we don't know his name. We know him as the unknown. This unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls, he recalled. It was terrifying for the kids. Is he an evil man who makes chocolate? Or is the chocolate itself evil? An evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. Remember that from the movie? Of course you don't, because it wasn't in the movie. Connell, again, a little background on him, a stand-up comedian. He moved to Glasgow to follow his comedy dreams after Googling what the funniest city in the UK was. He had more to say about the experience in his interview, but first he explains how he was cast and the beginning stages of the event. Quote, I'm constantly applying for more acting jobs and comedy work. Then I got a phone call on Thursday saying, congratulations, you're going to play Willy Wonka. We will send you over the script and dress rehearsal is tomorrow, McConnell said. The script was 15 pages of AI-generated gibberish of me just monologuing these mad things. They even misspelled my contract, but I do have a legally binding contract with two O's. But I stayed up all night learning it, thinking this would make sense in the dress rehearsal when I see all the tech. Jenny Fogarty was hired to portray a, quote, Wonkadoodle, the event's off-brand version of an Oompa Loompa. She had her own strange experience. Fogarty was shocked when she was sent an inappropriate costume from an Amazon box that arrived a mere hour before the event opened. Quote, I noticed that the costumes we were given, all of them were female, and we were given the sexy version as opposed to the traditional ones. Fogarty wrote in a Facebook group called the House of Illuminati Scam, quote, some people had t-shirts underneath to give it a bit more modesty. I just had a lacy shirt underneath. Fogarty also claimed that she was given a 15-page script one day before the event, but was told to improvise instead since the actors had no rehearsal time. Quote, it was shocking. It was embarrassing, to be pretty honest. We were trying our best, all the actors, to make it work, but we were given just 12 hours to learn our script and told just to improvise. It's not easy to improvise a whole show, she said. Felicia, the teenager playing the character of the unknown, agreed. There wasn't any rehearsals. I got there early to practice, but it hadn't been set up. We were all saying it was a mess in there and hadn't been any organization. We were just hoping that together it wouldn't be that bad. But it was. At the Friday evening dress rehearsal just hours before the opening, Connell went to the Willy Wonka Experience location to find that it was in fact worse than he had ever imagined. He says, quote, In some ways, it was a world of imagination. Like, imagine that there is a whole chocolate factory in here, he said. I spoke to the people running it and thought, surely by the morning it won't look like this. And then I turned up in the morning and it absolutely did. 
And so he'd been stationed at the end of the 10-minute experience, taking photos with kids and doing a Willy Wonka monologue. He'd also be wrapping up the unknown storyline, I guess by killing it Ghostbuster style through an enchanted magic portal. But that also, surprise, surprise, didn't exactly happen. Quote, at the end of my monologue, I was supposed to suck up the unknown man with a vacuum cleaner. I asked them if they had a vacuum cleaner and they said, yeah, we haven't really got there yet, so just improvise. So I started to cut things out, thinking that would be just silly. Says Felicia, the actor playing the unknown, I was just sitting behind the mirror trying to act creepy because that was the only direction I was given. It was definitely a big mixed bag of reactions. Some people loved it, some people were terrified of it. But I think most people didn't really know what I was there for, which was the same for me. I was sitting behind the mirror texting my mom saying it was going so wrong. Paul Connell also wants you to know that work violations were absolutely breached, and that the actors really did care about giving the kids a nice time despite this. Quote, I was making jokes, but we were told to give them one jelly bean and a quarter cup of lemonade, he says. No chocolate at the chocolate experience. There was supposed to be a chocolate fountain somewhere, but I never saw it. I was told I would get a 15-minute break every 45 minutes after each group went through, but I ended up playing Willy Wonka for three and a half hours straight. I didn't know where I ended and Wonka began. I was losing my mind by that point. The organizer came up to me saying, you're spending too much time with the kids. We need to get them through as quickly as possible. By this point, I was visibly angry. I was like, now there's going to be a lot of disappointed kids. The actor said he finally managed to get a lunch break, deciding to spend it sitting in his car, staring at the floor, trying to avoid the sight of crying children being turned away by security. I was Wonka and it's my face everywhere, but I'm just a last minute actor, really. I didn't organize anything. By the end of Connell's very depressing lunch break, people had revolted. Quote, when I came back, that's when everything kicked off, he explained. There was an angry mob at the door not being let in. I had to wedge my way through. People were shouting. People who put on the event were crying. There were arguments, people running around everywhere. The set had been trashed. He called another huddle of the two other Willy Wonkas and the nearest Oompa Loompas, adding, We decided to just walk away. It was actually getting quite dangerous for us, but it was heartbreaking, to be honest. There were kids in costume better than ours, crying. I used to be a teacher, and that was triggering for me. One thing I wanted to make clear is that everyone had been so nice to the actors in person and on the day. He finished, It's a night I'll try to forget. Sadly, not only will I remember it, everyone I know will remember it too. As of the recording of this episode, and according to Connell and Fogarty, the actors have yet to be paid. The fallout, after the break. Hi. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hello, how are you? Hello. How are you doing? How's it going out there? Oh. Mm. Mm. Bad? Sorry. A little March Madness going on. <laughs> March Madness. It's madness in here. We want to say hello to anyone who's listening, supporting the Spreading the Good Word of Ghost Town. Mm. We thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, oh boy, the governing body mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is our favorite body. That's right. The only body. I'm monogamous with our government. Yeah. I'm Polly. 
Ooh, okay. I don't even know what any of those things mean. I just say them. <laughs> and I try to say them with confidence. Chiefly. I don't know what anything means. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a couple of mayors. Mm. And they have their own immersive experiences they're going to give a shot. Oh, do they? Yeah, they got very inspired by, by, cool. by this disaster. They're going to oh, do these boy. things right. Well, nice work, you guys. This mayor is pitching the... Goodfellas immersive experience. <laughs> cool. It's just in in a kind of 1970s New Jersey mm, home. It's in a big booth. He's, and a lot of, he has a lot of booths. And everyone gets handed one meatball. <laughs> one meatball. You get one meatball wow. each. And <laughs> one person gets made and one person gets unmade, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's one of those experiences. <laughs> it's dangerous. It and is. then if you're made or unmade, you just slide yourself down in the booth uh, yeah. and the next person comes in. That's fun. I like that. Well, that's Ashley Matson. Hello. This mayor's got a really great pitch mm. for an immersive experience. Water world, where everyone else got it wrong, this person's going to get it right. Hell yeah. It's a... Above ground pool in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple goldfish that they throw in just for excitement. I mean, you could see there's, there's tape all over the sides. <laughs> You're just f floating around and you just have to imagine. And there's, of course, AI water around it and poster mm. board to make it seem like there's just a lot of water. Nice. And you're just kind of there going, is this it? <laughs> yeah. You, just, you leave with like a weird blue glitter on you. And uh, everyone gets one. And weird neck medallion. I don't know. I feel like we has a lot medallion. of neck medallions. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, I just thought you just you just get like super soaked a little bit. You well, know, they're like, already so in the water. You. Yeah, I guess you just get one one more for the road. One more squirt <laughs> for the road. Well, you could take that up with Kelly Meehan. Hello. This person setting up their own immersive experience, a little eyes wide shut experience. <laughs> You show up with somebody you're with, you don't leave with them. Uh-uh. <laughs> you just get swapped no. out. <laughs> yeah. It's behind those masks. Oh, P.S. It's bring your own mask. They do have like a box of masks on the way in. <laughs> but it's like, them? you can tell it's like from old kids' costumes, so it's really weird. <laughs> It's, like, it's just like one's just kind of like, who is a Pokemon? So you, you better get there early because you don't want to get stuck with the Pokemon mask. No one's going to take you seriously. Especially in the topless rooms. That would be very jarring. Be it's bad. Very it's Or weird. maybe it's hot. I don't know. <laughs> Who's to say? I'm not one to judge. Remember, I'm Polly. That's Kat Jozel. Hello. This person is got their own immersive experience. The Oppenheimer experience. <laughs> Where it's just a bunch of people who wear glasses kind of like mine, like those kind of like yeah. 1960s glasses. Yeah, yeah. It's just all dudes. Yeah. And they all have notepads and they're mm -hmm. just sitting around judging you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> for many so, reasons. Someone gets a little sweaty. Yeah. I someone's assume. a little sweaty. Um, and then there's just a big explosion and you don't know where or what. But you know what? You don't want to know. They don't tell you. They're like, it's best that you don't know. <laughs> so you're like complicit, but like you're kind of not. Oh, cool. Oh, it's Emma Hopkins. Hello. This person's experience is, uh, it's a pretty deep cut. It's kind of inspired by our TGI Fridays episode. It's the cocktail experience, <laughs> which I did see for the very first time. Mm. And it is, when I tell you it is not what you think it's going to be almost, it is weird. Ooh. It is a weird, I was watching, I was like, what is happening in this movie? It's both bad and strange, and it's just two different movies happening at once. Damn. But basically, it's in an old TGI Fridays, and they're just like, sure, do whatever you want here. We don't care. It's an old TGI Fridays. What do we care? <laughs> just do it. And, you know, you're just, you're just throwing drinks in the air, and it's just don't step on the broken glass. Wow. That's a fun one. And then actually Tom Cruise does show up and gets very excited in your face Whoa, about that's... just wants success. <laughs> and he just he just wants to make money. And he just doesn't get any just flipping drinks and uh, his hairstyle changes throughout mm. the experience. So it's really great. Wow. That's Matthew Clemens Lorray. Hello. This experience, it's going to mess with your mind. Mm -mm. It's going to mess with your mind. Inspired by the one week re-release of the movie Tenet. Mm. No one knows what's going on, which I did see, by the way. I did, I did go see the um, 70 millimeter. Oh, cool. And uh, Yeah. <laughs> I'm also one of the white guys in the Oppenheimer yeah. things that track. Okay. Yeah, that, it all, it all <laughs> yeah. makes sense to me. 
You don't know what's going on. You can't hear what anyone's saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're just walking backwards. You're walking forward. You don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Also, it's set in New Jersey. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's Marissa Rothermel. Hello. And the director, our governor, the one who's directing all these things from a plane. Mm. I saw a, I guess it's like a meme, and it's somebody saying Taylor Swift going from one side of her plane to the other, and it's a plane inside the plane. <laughs> that is our governor right there. That's Who true. travels by plane to go mm-hmm. from one side of the plane to the other side of the plane. It's incredible. And she's there in New Jersey mm-hmm, mm-hmm. being like, this is the one and only time I'm going to go to New Jersey. Yeah. She's like, this is it. I'm doing this as a favor to many important friends that I have. And she's there to make sure that no one snitches. Not a one. No snitches allowed. Mm-mm. Yes. Nothing is safe. It's all dangerous. <laughs> it's all broken glass and AI and water and mm-hmm. meatballs and New Weird Jersey. Weird keepsakes and bad costumes. It's, that's all it is. And me. And you. <laughs> I'm in all of them, by the way. Nice. Nice. I got a contract that's spelled wrong, and I'm in all of them. Yep. Cool. But that contract. would be our governor, Avian, Avian Noble. Noble. If you want no ads, no chit-chat, bonus episodes, just the good stuff, seven days free. Try it out, seven days free. Why not? Do it yeah. up. It's going to hurt. Well, why not? Do it. Do it up. Why not? We'll get some new bonus episodes mm-hmm. out. There's probably like mm-hmm. 75 bonus episodes you can listen yeah, to right it's, now. It's a fair amount, I would say. Or do the seven days free and bail. Like, you don't yeah. want to hear this chit chat. Get the fuck out of there. You don't need it. You don't need our bullshit. You got your life to live. And if you don't, you can just stare at the wall. It's more It's more, It's more. more productive. Yeah, absolutely. Head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. I want to say when we were doing you talking about this episode – I I think I got a video from my brother, and then I was like, Rebecca, have you seen this? Rebecca's like, yeah, I've already seen this. I'm already working on an episode. So it's one uh-huh. of those times. This happens probably like one out of every 20-something episodes where we're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. like, num, 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 yeah. You know, you're, you're just like, you're like, this is ripe for the picking. Yeah, again, we don't do a lot of timely things for lots of different reasons. I think my love is to go back – through the years and the centuries and pick something that people don't know about. But the fact that people are really talking about this is very fun and funny and like. And we love it as a, you know, fire festival. And I will say, and I purposely did not read anything more about it because you said you're doing the episode Mm -hmm. and I want to have fun when I'm editing this. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I did watch a lot of the TikToks. (laughs) Yeah. And there is a pretty sad Sunday bar (laughs) that's just these metal trays with like some (laughs) mud and it's just like clanging around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I don't know. I think it is sadder than the um, Tumblr festival. I forget what it was called. Remember where there was like the the little ball pit in the middle of this room? Yeah, that was very sad. And they're like, for everyone who got that is upset, you get an extra hour in the gross Mm -hmm. ball pit. Oh, God. That's. That's like 2009 depressing. Yeah. This is 2024. Where there's is no now. excuses depressing. We're on the horizon. This is. I mean, this is us where we are right now as a culture. Yeah, the sad Sunday bar is – it's hard to even call it a Sunday bar. I know somebody did, but it's really just bins. Again, the idea of at least give them some cool chocolate sprinkles. At the end of the day, there's really – and we t- we touched upon this before and we'll touch upon it again before the episode ends. This chocolate factory immersive experience has no chocolate. Not any chocolate. Does that make you that's the kind of the first thing on the checklist to have if it's in the name, if it's in the title of your immersive experience. So let's get back into some of the reaction to this. It ain't pretty. After 850 people got refunded on their money that Saturday, Willie's chocolate experience organizer, Billy Cool. <laughs> I think that's what his name is. It's C O U L L. It could be Cowl. Do with that what you will. Apologize for his quote. My vision of the artistic rendition of a well known book didn't come to fruition, and for that, I am absolutely, truly, and utterly sorry. But the parents were still pretty mad, and rightfully so. Families were still on their way and arrived to the experience in person, only to be informed by a cardboard sign at the front of the warehouse that it was closed. Later, the House of Illuminati apologized in a statement which acknowledged that its fabulous event failed to meet expectations, and had devolved into a, quote, stressful and frustrating day. Quote, unfortunately, last minute we were let down in many areas of the event and tried our best to continue on and push through and now realize we probably should have canceled first thing in the morning instead, the statement said. Paula Graham came with her husband, eight-year-old daughter, and a friend. 
She says that she felt cheated by the AI-generated advertising. Quote, their page and their advertising looked very professional. They made out as if it was going to be this really special experience, a one-off, Graham said. In my eyes, I thought it was going to be some kind of light show with actors. You couldn't even call it an event. It was terrible. It was shocking for the money you paid, she added. There were kids coming away crying. There were families from all over. They put out a bit of cardboard saying, event canceled. It was as if the chocolate factory had been shut down, an attendee commented. Stuart Sinclair, who drove two hours with his three kids, told CBS News, quote, It was all described as a massive, immersive experience. Great idea for kids. Chocolate fountains. It just sounded really, really good. A nice day for the children and the family. And when we got there, as you can see by the pictures and stuff, it was just not that at all. There were four or five props, a few jelly beans for the kids, half a cup of lemonade. Just was not what was promised whatsoever. Sinclair said his oldest children found it funny and laughed it off, but his four-year-old daughter, who was dressed as Willy Wonka for the occasion, was really disappointed. Quote, She was telling all of her teachers beforehand how she was going to meet Willy Wonka, and it didn't really pan out like that, he said. He also added that there wasn't even any chocolate. Mm-hmm. That was the worst part about it, he said. He said that the cast did their best, and that honestly, the situation was probably worse for them. They were in as much shock as us, but it was probably worse for them because it's their job and made them look bad when it wasn't even their fault. A bad experience with bad feelings all around. But some good did come out of this, and I will say I'm surprised by that. Now there is a kind of cult-like following of the newest character in the Wonka universe, the Unknown. Says Felicia, the woman who played, the woman, the teenager who played this character, quote, at first I was really embarrassed about it, but then we went to the pub after, and we were just laughing about it. It was so ridiculous, it was actually funny. And now it's become viral, it's genuinely life-changing, and I'm really happy I did it. Everybody loves the character and posts all about it, so it makes me happy that people can see the funny side. Funny side in a world full of good intentions and literal, pure imagination. Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts.